Happy Independence Day, friends. We are indeed privileged to be Indians. We are uh, the largest democracy in the world today. And uh, also, we have completed 75 years of independence. We need to thank God for that. Today, we also have to remember people and thank God for them, like our freedom fighters, led by Mahatma Gandhi and others. We have to think of our first Prime Minister, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, who put us in the right track from the very start. Thank God for Dr. Ambedkar and his team for the wonderful constitution they gave us based on the principles of justice, liberty, equality, and fraternity. Need to think of leaders like Tandai Periyar, who stood up for social justice, as well as for women empowerment. We need to thank God for Hirundalaiwar uh, Kamaraja, who was a role model for good governance and compassion for the people. He concerned was about universal free education and building up industries and uh, infrastructure. Think of uh, Arignir Anna, who made sure that English continued as an official language in India, thereby providing an open door to the developed world. We have to really thank them because of those leaders and the solid foundations they laid. India took off in all fields, whether it was uh, green revolution or white revolution, education or health, science and technology, space and nuclear program, and uh, soon we'll be landing on the moon as well. And we got to thank uh, God as Indian Christians, since we are doubly blessed. We not only belong to a great and free nation, India, but also we are citizens of an heavenly kingdom of eternal freedom. Because of the everlasting sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, we are today free from the slavery of sin free from the guilt of the past, free from the fear of the future, the freedom from doom of death, from the deeds of darkness. And uh, as uh, Christians, we also have to thank God for Thomas, one of the disciples of the 12 disciples of Jesus. 2,000 years back, God sent him all the way to the Indian shores, was finally martyred in our own Chennai. And uh, if you recollect, it was Thomas' question which prompted Jesus to answer, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There were so many missionaries who sacrificed and came to India, both from Europe as well as from US. People like Ziegenbaum, William Carey, Amy Carmichael, Ida Scudder, John Anderson, and the countless many others. They brought here not only the gospel, the good news of Jesus, they also contributed in various fields in India, like linguistics, creating grammar, translating various works from Indian languages to European languages, and taking all those work to the world, fighting for the social causes, and more importantly, establishing educational institutions and hospitals, which exist to date as a testimony of their sacrifice of love. Thanks to all these leaders, national leaders as well as missionaries, we have uh, reached such great heights yet today. We have a whole lot of challenges facing the nation. Look at the poverty, the millions of people under the poverty line. The Global Hunger Index, we are 107 out of the 121 countries listed, very low there. Same is with the Freedom, the Global Freedom Index. We are at 
161 out of 180 countries in the lowest bucket possible. Think of the gap which is widening between the rich and the poor. One percent of Indians are holding 40 percent of the wealth of the nation as per a report of 2021 and the gap is widening every day. Look at the rape which is happening. Every day it's on the increase. Rape of minors, gang rapes. We have seen on the recent uh, video which went viral. Think of the ethnic and communal clashes, people suffering because of that violence. Look at the draconian misuse of laws like UPA and sedition law. So the questions which come to our mind, friends, is where is the independence and freedom for the victims of this poverty, of rape and violence, of rotting in jails, of social activists and political activists as well as journalists? Where is freedom for them? And what is the role of Indian Christians in this situation? You might think we are a minority. Friends, recall the early Christians who through their, though they were small in numbers because of their lives and witness, they could shake the Roman Empire. Think of the missionaries who came to India and contributed so immensely. So perhaps Indian Christians today have lost their saltiness. They put the light under buckets. Jesus wanted us to be the salt and light to the world. So friends, I want to just exhort you with two points in conclusion. One, we should be freedom fighters as agents of light and love, as ambassadors of Christ. We have to show the people the path to eternal freedom, freedom from the slavery of sin, freedom from hunger and poverty, freedom from rape and violence, freedom from rape and justice. And uh, finally, friends, we got to be prayer warriors, not only freedom fighters, but we have to communicate to God every day as Paul advised Timothy in his first letter, chapter two, verses, the first two verses, he says, we need to pray, request God, Pray for our leaders in authority, right from our president, prime minister, the entire cabinet, the executive, the judiciary, the legislator, at all levels, so that freedom is there to all Indians, irrespective of their caste, creed, color, or class, so that everyone could enjoy the freedom in an environment of peace and prosperity. We have come a long way but we have to go a very long way ahead. Let us pray to God that he blesses India even more in the years to come. Happy Independence Day again, friends. Thank you.